Seems like everything I've been reporting on is about some crazy calamity in the space world. It's been 77 days at the ISS. Butch and Sonny will soon know how they're coming home. Could it be a bored Starliner? Or maybe a bored Dragon next year? Maybe we'll hear this weekend no earlier than Saturday, August 24th. Or maybe they'll say the date has been delayed again. Either way, we're apparently going to learn what is going to happen with Butch and Sunny this Saturday. I plan to live stream it, but I just wanted to give you a heads up in case you were curious. So 77 days ago, Butch and Sonny arrived at the ISS. They've been up there for longer than they planned. It was originally supposed to be an eight-day stay, and here we are, almost late August. The decision was supposed to be made about how they would return home in mid-August, and now we might learn this weekend, finally, what NASA is going to do. Now, there's two decisions at play here. We either send the astronauts home via Boeing's Starliner, which had issues on the way up there, and they've been doing a lot of testing and research, and there's been internal dissent and disagreement on whether or not to use this to send the astronauts home, which would signal to me that they just probably shouldn't use it and should send it uncrewed, get that software parameter, upgrade, blah, 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 get it so that they can send it home uncrewed. And if nothing happens, they can say, woo, we probably could have put crew on there. And if something happens, they probably could say, wow, we're so glad that we didn't put Butch and Sonny on there. Can you kind of quantify the disagreements that um, the NASA team is voicing during these meetings or the program control board? Like what number of dissents or disagreements are you having compared to those who are supporting the data or, you know, who comes off or for Dana, who comes off of crew nine under the contingency plan? Would that be NASA astronauts or the Russ Cosmos astronaut? Thanks. Yeah, I'll address the, the latter question first and then talk about the disagreements a little bit. Uh, you, you know, we're not really ready to share uh, the data on which crew members. I think we'll do that at the appropriate time. Uh, should we employ that option? Uh, relative to the disagreements, I, I, I don't want to, what I, I think the best way to characterize it is the way I, I said it, right? Um, people with various levels of experience uh, look at uncertainty differently. And so the real disagreements are uh, how much uncertainty they view in the data and how much risk level they view uh, relative to Starliner. And now we actually, for the first time, I think ever in human spaceflight, uh, while docked ISS have uh, two U.S. vehicles to choose from in, in some respect, uh, Dragon and, and Starliner. And so uh, we knew the test flight would be riskier. The, the Dragon Demo-2 test flight was risky as well when we flew Bob and Doug in, in May of 2020. Uh, now that we have had the helium leaks on orbit and we've had uh, the thruster fail off, some in the team, don't see that level of risk something that we should we should entertain and I think that's where we're having the the vigorous debates and discussions uh, at the PCB and then at, at other levels now if they were going to use Starliner that would probably be sometime in September but if they do the alternative option, which a lot of people, including a very unscientific poll I took on X or Twitter, think that they're going to send them home on a crew dragon and they would have to wait until February 2025. You heard me. February of next year. Now, this would also create some ripple effects, including the fact that two of the astronauts for Crew 9 would have to stay grounded in order to make room for Butch and Sonny to come home. Butch and Sonny would also have their new spacesuits taken up with Crew 9 on the way up there. Let me read you some of the press release from NASA. NASA Boeing chart course for Starliner return review. It says NASA's decision on whether to return Starliner to Earth with astronauts aboard is expected 
expected no earlier than Saturday, August 24th at the conclusion of an agency-level review chaired by Ken Bowersox, the Associate Administrator of NASA Space Operations Mission Directorate. The agency flight readiness review is where any formal dissents are presented and reconciled. Other agency leaders who routinely participate in launch and return readiness reviews for crewed missions include NASA's Administrator Bill Nelson and a bunch of other really high up people. Now, this is where I come in. NASA will host a televised news conference following the review's conclusion to discuss the agency's decision and next steps. Now, that conference is likely going to happen around 12 p.m. my time, so 1 p.m. Eastern time, and I guess that's what I'm going to be doing this Saturday because, of course, I'm very interested in this, and so are many of you. This has been an extremely unusual case with such a delay and much deliberation over what to do with this situation. Some people say they probably made the decision a while ago, and this is just a formality. I honestly have no idea what they are going to decide I've weighed both sides of it in my head, and I know what I would choose, but we'll just see what they do. So what are they doing in the meantime? Well, it says ahead of the agency level review, NASA and Boeing are working to finalize and present flight rationale to various teams across the community and to the program control board. Engineering teams have been working to evaluate a new model that represents the thruster mechanics and is designed to more accurately predict performance during the return phase of flight. This data could help teams better understand system redundancy from undocked to service module separation. Ongoing efforts to complete the new modeling, characterize spacecraft performance data, refine integrated risk assessments, and determine community recommendations will fold into the agency level review. Along the crew members of Expedition 71, NASA astronauts Butch Wilmore and Sonny Williams continue supporting a host of research, maintenance, and other activities aboard the Microgravity Laboratory since arriving on Starliner on June 6th. So that's interesting. It says that engineering teams have been working on better accurately predicting performance during the return phase of flight. So that makes me think that they actually might be going with Starliner, but I don't know. We'll just have to see. And I'll be doing a live stream tomorrow with Angry Astronauts. Uh, There's just so much going on. We've learned that Blue Origin has suffered uh, some setbacks behind the scenes building their new rocket, New Glenn. So apparently there was a factory mishap that damaged a portion of a future New Glenn rocket. And this will, of course, set them back. The upper portion of one rocket crumpled into itself in part due to worker error. Uh, That person's probably fired. Apparently, this happened while it was being moved to a storage hangar. And in another incident, another upper rocket portion failed during stress testing and exploded. Well, we know that space is hard, and that includes building and managing a rocket. By the way, also, the Polaris Dawn launch has been rescheduled. Apparently now it's going to happen early Tuesday morning. So I plan to be up quite late Monday to live stream that as well. No, I will not be there in person, but I will be streaming it live. And I think that it'll be really fun to watch together as this is such a historic mission. So this is just a little announcement in video form to let you know, please join me for Saturday's news conference. It might slip, hopefully it doesn't, and hopefully we actually learn what the heck is going on with Starliner. By the way, my Mechazilla shirts are only available for a limited amount of time, and I just added the women's edition to the store. So if you bought yourself a shirt, but you want your wife or your partner to enjoy a ladies v-neck, here is the link in the description. So thank you so much for supporting my channel and buying merchandise. It is so exciting to see other people wearing my Ellie and Space clothing. So thank you so much. And I'll see you hopefully on Saturday. If you guys enjoyed this video and all of my Starship coverage, please subscribe to Ellie and Space. It's completely free and that way you won't miss any future videos. If you want to take it a step further, please consider signing up for my Patreon. YouTube revenue can be very unpredictable and hit or miss and you guys on my Patreon are why I'm able to take these trips and help me experience the life that I'm very thankful to live down here at Starbase and many of the other places that I've gone to report for the channel and the places that I'll be going in the future.